Have you heard of the synchronous firefly? They are a unique species of firefly or fireflies and they have a unique pattern of lighting during mating season and they flash simultaneous for about six to eight seconds, then they stop and they leave the area pitch black when they stop. So you may be thinking, great, thanks for the science lesson, but what does this have to do with happiness and gratitude? Stay tuned, watch till the end, and I will show you. So for those of you that don't know me, I am Vismaya Rubin, founder of Living in Gratitude Today, teacher, speaker, best-selling author, but my favorite role is that of a gratitude gangsta. What? If you're not subscribing to my YouTube channel yet, please click the subscribe button below and the bell so that you get notified every time I put out a new video. So back to the fireflies. I learned about the synchronous fireflies from Sean Aker, who's the author of The Happiness Advantage and Big Potential. If you have not checked out his TED Talk, definitely do. He's amazing and he, does a, he has a lot of really incredible research that connects happiness and gratitude. So you see when these fireflies or when species of fireflies light up individually and randomly, their reproduction success rate is 3%. But when they light up as an inter interdependent community, when they light up simultaneously all together, their success rate goes from 3% to 82%. That's a huge jump. Can you imagine what that does for the firefly community going from a reproduction rate, success rate of 3% to 82%, huge. So they must understand what the Beatles meant when they said, I get by with a little help from my friends. Because when they light up all together, the female fly fireflies are able to see which of the males are ready to reproduce. You see, one of the fundamental human needs is a sense of belonging a sense of community or tribe. And I posit that that's why social media is as powerful and, and is so ingrained in, in our lives as it is. We post videos, we post selfies, we post pictures of our favorite things, and we want to get people to say, yes, that's great, I love it, that's so cool, I understand, I'm part of your, your community, I, I thumbs up, you look great, you look fabulous. And then what happens is when they don't, we start to feel bad. So please, when I post this video, don't make me feel bad. Feel free to share it all over the world. Comment, like, and say lovely things. That would be great. You see, we need community during happy times as well as during challenging times. And Aker shares in his research in The Big Potential, he says that when we are faced with obstacles or challenges and when we're dealing with them alone, the obstacles look so much bigger. However, when we're dealing with that obstacle or challenge with community, the obstacle looks a whole lot smaller. Now understand something, the challenge doesn't change. Our perception of the challenge changes. And it goes back to the Beatles song, I get by with a little help from my friends. The power of community. So those obstacles, again, do not change. They're still the same obstacles, but the way that we see them is what shifts. So right before I made this video, I had to call on my community, and I, and I went back and forth about doing it. My stepdad's 87 years old. I call him every night to make sure he takes his insulin, and he's hard of hearing, so there's times that I have to call him several times in a row. It's kind of like a, a system we have. And then he finally picks up the phone or he'll call me back and he's like, did you call me? Well, I had called him earlier in the afternoon. He didn't respond. And then I said, okay, it's the evening. I called him about 40 times in a row. And I know that sounds crazy, but I knew that he doesn't always hear. He didn't pick up. And I'm starting to get a little panicky. So I called my aunt who lives across the street. She was, you know, not home. I called my stepmom, no answer. I called my brother and I'm like, are you in Miami by any chance? He's like, I am. And I told him the situation. He goes, I'll stop by. The minute he said that, it was almost felt like the weight of the world had lifted off my shoulders. Part of me was freaking out a little bit. And then once I had talked to my brother, I was calmer. He was gonna go check on him. And of course, the way it works is that the minute I stop freaking out and I'm calmer, I get in touch with my stepdad and everything is okay. 
But again, it's the power of community and a power of, you know, sometimes I, we just need a little bit of help and we need to call on people and ask them. So what are some things that you can do to establish rules and rituals in your community? Well, the first thing is set up times to check in on each other, right? We're going through some times, things are a little crazy right now. Things are not the way we're used to. They're, they're a whole lot different. But set up times to figure out or to find out how each other are doing. Tell the truth. Find out what your friend, how your friends are doing and let them know really and authentically how you're doing. Now understand, this is not about vomiting blah, and having you know the opportunity to play negative volleyball where I'm going to tell you something bad and you're going to tell me something bad and we're going to go back and forth to see who has the worst story. That's not the point. The point is that we're going to authentically share what's going on so that we have a community that allows us the opportunity to be heard and supported and loved and nurtured. It's again, not about who can up one each other. It's not about the, you know, the, the negative poker game where we're gonna keep up, up wanting each other. The second thing is, you know, going back to the social media, if you post things, you know what it feels when people don't respond to you. So go out and start responding to your friends. Algorithm change, so sometimes they may not see your post, but let them know, listen, I love that picture you posted of your child. I love the picture of the new puppy. I'm so happy to see that you and your wife are doing so well, or that you got a new car, or that things are looking up, or I'm really sorry for the loss of, of somebody. But let them know that you're, you see them. Let them know that you're paying attention. And it's funny, you know, for years, I would leave birthday messages every day on Facebook because Facebook at the, you know, every morning leaves you a list and says, okay, go wish your friends a happy birthday. And then I stopped and I stopped because I was getting so sucked into social media land that I was there for hours and I wasn't getting anything done. I wasn't productive. And I jumped off, I jumped off of the bandwagon and I stopped doing it. And one of the reasons that I did it is because I my birthday is my favorite day of the year. And every year I looked forward to the messages and the calls and, you know, people from different countries that I would, I hadn't talked to in a while, or they always made an effort to call me on my birthday or to leave me a message on my birthday. And it always, you know, it, it lifted me up. It made me feel good. So I always went out of my way to make sure that I did the same for other people. And then I stopped. So I'm going to start again, starting tomorrow. And this time I'm going to get set a timer so that I go in and I go out because I don't need to be sucked into social media land where I'm checking everybody's messages and looking at everything. You know, 10 minutes and we're good. 15 minutes and we're good. And that's also, you know, when you're doing this activity where you're checking in on other people, set the timer because if not, you can go down that spiral where you're in social media world for for a long time and then it does more harm than good. But your your whole purpose is to let your people know I see you, I'm paying attention, you matter to me. And then the third thing that you can do is send notes of gratitude. Sean, you see, we're on a first name basis, Sean Aker and I, he just doesn't know it yet, but we are gonna be great friends one day because I absolutely love and admire the work that he and his wife, Michelle, do. They are positive psychologists and they do this tremendous research, they go into schools, they help communities, and it's really about how can we level up our, how can we amp up our levels of gratitude and happiness. So I am, I, I love them. I think they're fabulous. And they're going to be my friends when they, they just don't know it. So one of the things that Sean suggests, and he does the research to back up why this is so powerful, is he says, you know, spend two minutes in the morning and spend, and, and write a, Thank you email to somebody who has impacted your life. <clears throat> now, what you'll notice is that in the beginning, you'll write one to friends and to family. And then after that, you're like, well, what do I do? And you're going to do this for 21 days. Go back to your teachers. Go back to your mentors, your professors. Go back to the, the person who you interacted with, your real estate agent. Or, you know, it's funny. The other day I was on, on a phone call with Discover Credit Card and there was <clears throat> excuse me, and I was calling because I was going to complain about something. The woman answered the phone and was so 
upbeat and so polite and so happy that I just started to laugh. But I'm like, seriously, how can anyone call you up and be upset with you? So it might be an opportunity for me to reach out to Discover and say, listen, I don't know if you realize, but the person I spoke with was was wonderful and I should have gotten her name and, and written a note. But those are other things you can do. So <coughs> I was the recipient of a couple of these notes last week and they came from former students and one of them I had not spoken to in 20 years but she saw that I was friends with one of her classmates and she reached out to me and she says, you know, I hope I have the right person. I just wanted to say thank you for being a phenomenal teacher. And she went on to tell me things that I didn't remember that I did. And she says, it took me 20 years to find you and thank you. And she says, I, you know, I talk about you. I tell my kids what a great teacher where you are. Whenever we talk about who was your favorite teacher, your name always comes up. And I have to tell you that when she sent me this, I was like, my mouth dropped to the ground and I must have read that note 30 times because it made me feel so good to know that I made an impact on somebody else, not even trying to. So, and here's the fun part about it. You see, it's like the positive ping pong, right? So she sent me a note and made me feel fabulous. And then I thanked her, which made her feel fabulous. And then we kind of went back and forth for a little bit and it didn't, I'm, 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 maybe I'm bold to say that it didn't take that much effort, but it doesn't take that much effort to say something nice to somebody. In the past, I've written letters to my favorite elementary school teachers. I've written letters to some professors that I adored in college. I wrote a letter to my old um, eye doctor and I said, you know, I just want to thank you for the gift of vision because when I was younger, I almost lost my vision. My eyes were very bad and... I said, you know, because of you, I've seen the Eiffel Tower and I've seen, you know, I started sharing some places that I have been in the beautiful sights that I have seen because of the magic that he, he, that he performed on my eyes, the gift that he gave me. So it's just little things, letting people know, you know what, something you said inspired me so much that this is who I am now because of you. And it doesn't have to be something huge or, or monumental. It could be, you know, your kind words made a difference for me when I needed it the most. So these again are the rules that you get to establish for your community. Some ways to really tap in to the power of community. And remember, we all get by with a little help from our friends. So I'm gonna tell you again really fast what they are. So number one, set up times to check in. Number two, interact on social media even if nobody's paying attention to you. And number three, commit for 21 days to send out a gratitude thank you card to somebody in your community that has made a difference for you. And if you have not spoken to them in a very long time, even better, step out of your comfort zone and reach out to these people that may not even realize what they did for you. If you love this video, again, please click the subscribe button, click the bell, share it, leave a comment, and let me know which one of these things are you gonna do to build community.